proving that a quadrilateral with given vertices is a parallelogram. Consider the quadrilateral PQRS below. Okay? Note the PQRS has vertices at these coordinates. Okay? So P, the coordinates are 2, 1. Q has coordinates negative 5, negative 1. R is at negative 3, negative 4. And S is at 4, negative 2. Okay, now, what we're actually going to be doing to show that this is a parallelogram, right, if we look at the definition of a parallelogram, it's a four-sided shape. We can see there's four sides here. But opposite sides, opposite pairs of sides have to be um, parallel, okay? So here it's going to ask us some questions about the lengths of the sides and the slopes of the sides here. So to find the length, it asks us first to find the length of QR, okay? So first we're going to do QR. QR is this side right there, okay? And we want the length of that, or the distance from Q to R. So we're going to use distance formula, okay? So distance formula is uh, the square root of X2 minus X1 quantity squared plus Y2 minus Y1 quantity squared. Okay, and we have our coordinates, okay, so negative 5, negative 1, negative 3, negative 4, so here's my coordinates, Q, they said was at negative 5, negative 1, R is at uh, negative 3, negative 4, okay, so I'm just going to use the distance formula here. I'm going to kind of do it on a scrap piece of paper. Uh, so I'm going to write this down again. Okay. Q is at negative 5, negative 1. R is at negative 3, negative 4. Okay. I'm going to put it up here by the distance formula. Okay. So the distance here is the square root of. Okay. Now I need x the x-coordinate from my second point, all right? This is my second point. x-coordinate is negative 3. So I'm just going to substitute in my values here. Now I'll subtract the x-coordinate from my first point, which is negative 5. Okay, so I'm subtracting a negative 5 here. Quantity squared plus... Now I need y from my second point, so that's negative 4, minus y from my first point, which is, neg uh, let's see, negative 1, quantity squared, okay? Now, I actually like to put these negatives here when I have the subtract a negative situation in another set of parentheses, okay? Um, but originally I, I left it off just so we didn't get confused with the parentheses but could see the subtract and then the negative, right, the negative number there. So my negative 5 is right there. My negative 3 is here, okay, the negative 1 is there, the negative 4 is there. So all four of those numbers have gone into my distance formula. Now I'm just going to simplify or do the arithmetic, okay. So subtracting a negative here makes this really negative 3 plus 5 quantity squared plus, uh, again, subtract a negative makes this negative 4 plus 1 quantity squared, okay? Uh, inside parentheses first, so negative 3 plus 5 is 2. We're going to square that. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. We're going to square that. Now, if you, you probably can do negative 3 squared in your head, but when you're doing these squaring a negative, if you have to put it in the calculator, make sure, right, 
to type it in with the parentheses, not like this. Those are two different things to the calculator, okay? And we want to make sure that it gets typed in with the parentheses on it, okay, so that we get the correct answer. So 2 squared is 4 plus, right, again, you can probably do this one in your head, but if you have to type square a negative number um, for the distance formula, make sure that you put the parentheses around the number so that it squares the negative as well, okay? Negative 3 squared, we get positive 9, okay? And 4 plus 9 is the square root of 13, okay? Now, they've asked me here to give exact answers, not decimal approximations. So I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 13, okay? So my answer there is going to be the square root of 13. Now, 13 is prime. It doesn't break down or factor at all, so I can't simplify this radical. I'm just going to leave it. Okay, so now let's do PS, same thing, okay, we're going to find the distance from P to S, okay, so P has coordinates 2, 1, okay, S has coordinates 4, negative 2, so again, going up here and using the distance formula, okay, so the distance is, we're just going to substitute in and then simplify, square root of quantity x from my second point is 4, minus x from my first point is 2, we're going to square that, plus y from my second point is negative 2, minus, whoops, not comma, minus, y from my first point is 1, quantity squared, okay? 4 minus 2, we do inside the parentheses first, 4 minus 2 is 2, we're going to square that, plus negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3 squared, mm, this one looks like it's coming out exactly the same as the other one, okay? So this is 4 plus 9, or the square root of 13, okay? So, PS is this side over here, okay? And that one we also got square root of 13, okay? So these opposite sides have the same length, okay? So they're kind of testing two different properties of parallelograms here. Opposite sides are congruent. They have the same length, okay, which we've just proven. We got the same answer with the distance formula. Now we're going to compare the slopes of these two lines, okay? So now I need to find the slope of QR and PS, those same two segments, okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and move my paper up a little here. So we can see that, zoom out just a little bit so we can still see that distance formula up there, okay? All right, so now I'm going to use just the slope formula, right? M is, we usually use M for slope. When we have coordinates, right, we use the little slope formula. Okay, so the slope of QR, again, I'm going to do this on some scratch paper here. Well, actually, I can probably have space to do it right here. Okay, so using my slope formula, I need uh, Y, okay, the Y value from my second point. So I'm doing QR, these two again. Okay, so the y value from my second point, actually I will go ahead and do this so I can have my points right above me, okay? So q is negative 5, negative 1, r is negative 3, negative 4, okay? Using my little slope formula, I need the y value from my second point, so negative 
negative 4, okay? And then I'm going to subtract y value from my first point, okay? So I'm subtracting a negative 1 there. And I'm going to go ahead and put the negative 1 in parentheses. Make that a little clearer. Okay. Then underneath, I'm going to do x from my second point is negative 3 minus x from my first point, negative 5. Okay. So again, subtracting a negative is the same as adding. So negative 4 plus 1 over negative 3 plus 5. Okay. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2, so my slope is negative 3 halves, okay? So this is negative 3 halves. Now I'm going to find the slope of PS, okay? So flip this over. P is 2 comma 1. S is 4 comma negative 2. So again, doing the slope. So my slope is y from my second point, negative 2, subtract y from my first point, 1, divided by x from my second point, 4, minus x from my first point, 2. So negative 2 minus another 1 is negative 3, 4 minus 2 is 2. Okay. So again, I got negative 3 halves, okay, for my slope. So these two have the same length. I could go ahead and put little um, tally marks on there to show that they have the same length, and they also have the same slope, which means those two lines are also parallel, okay? So the last part down here now asks me, some questions about being a parallelogram, okay? So what can we conclude? So um, I have four choices here. The quadrilateral is a parallelogram because it has one pair of opposite sides that are both congruent and parallel. I'm kind of liking that one right now, okay? The quadrilateral is a paral parallelogram because it has one pair of opposite sides that are congruent even though those sides are not parallel. Okay, well, because I have the same slope here, they have to be parallel. Parallel lines have the same slope, okay? The quadrilateral is not a parallelogram. Well, uh, it is a parallelogram because I have op opposite parallel sides here. Now, I didn't test these two, the other two sides, to see if they're parallel, okay? But the fact that I have one pair of sides that are both congruent and parallel, kind of makes it a parallelogram. It cannot be determined if the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, okay? Um, so I'm going to mark C.